Hello everyone and welcome to another Feed Army video. In this video, I want to explain about the common issues you have with entering your data to Google Shopping. The first one is the XML formatting if you are using XML as your data feed. The issue is that you might not have escaped certain characters. For example, the character AND needs to be AND AMP semicolon. Also, the common issues are uh, certain um, characters that you're using, special characters that you're using in the data feed. These can be, for example, uh, and cent for, to, to find the character for the dollar cent and, and many more characters. So these should be escaped or removed from your data feed. Even though you have removed them from your data feed and uh, they are working, so certain characters are working, uh, it is possible that Google Shopping does not allow these speci specific characters. So these need to be removed as well, but you can only find those out once you have uh, submitted them as a test feed in Google Shopping. Um, there's also no official list which ones these are. So it's pretty much like a cat and mouse game. The second one is dynamic pricing. So once you've submitted, submitted your feed, it is possible that your uh, dynamic pricing uh, issue might uh, ar arise. Uh, this is basically that you uh, that Google cannot see what the pricing is on your website. This could be the case that you have multiple pricing available. So for example, you have a recommended retail price, a sale price, and then a normal price. Um, to avoid this issue, you need to use microdata. Um, so it's like a schema file, so it's a special coding that you use to identify in the source what the price is. Uh, the same goes for availability. These need to be identified. Pricing and availability needs to be specifically identified by the uh, engine. Now, what if you can't update your images? So you have uploaded already your image and then you cannot uh, re-upload that same image. So you have a product, for example, Samsung S5, you submitted an image and then you change your mind, you want a different image, but it's not working. The problem is that Google cannot uh, update an image that has the same URL. To avoid this problem, you could use a query string, for example, uh, question mark, query, and then put the date. Um, or you can just rename the file. As long as the file is completely different, then Google can update this image. Pricing and availability. The pricing and availability needs to be exactly the same as on the uh, website. So as I mentioned with dynamic pricing, uh, I want to really uh, focus on, on this area because you need to ensure that, it, that the price on your data is, for example, two pounds or two dollars and on your website needs to be exactly the same. Uh, if that is not done, then your product can end up in a um, in an exclusion. So Google just doesn't show that in their uh, shopping feed. Secure checkout and SSL. This is very important if you are collecting personal information, so this could be the billing address, then your website needs to be running on a SSL uh, website. So this is HTTPS instead of HTTP. This is very important. Even a lot of people say, but I'm using PayPal as my gateway. But if you are collecting information already on your website to transport over to PayPal, then you need to have a secure checkout. Categories. Uh, common people forget about these. Um, so the, the categories is basically a categorization where your product ends up in the Google Shopping feed. Um, so these need to be correct. So for example, if you have a, a part for a vehicle, don't put it in apparel. Uh, and vice versa. So it needs to be in a specific category because it, it, I think it's something to do with Google Shopping ranking your products in the correct category. Um, so this is very important that you enter them. There's a, a taxonomy uh, spreadsheet that you can look at. It's quite large um, that you can identify where your products belong into. Um, so this is quite important to do. 
Uh, unique identifiers. So this is actually GTIN, Global Trade Identification Number. Uh, this is quite important if your product is uh, categorized under a identification. So this means that if your manufacturer has a, a product that's registered, for example, an EAN number, which is in Europe, or a USP, uh, then you need to be able to enter that into the data feed. If this is not done, then it's highly likely that your product will not show up in Google Shopping. Um, also, do not buy bulk barcodes because that's simply not gonna work. Google has a big database that it can identify a certain uh, numbers to certain products. And if there's a mismatch or an ambiguous uh, barcode, then Google will uh, notify you that this product cannot be added. And if you have too many of these issues, it's also highly likely that you will uh, uh, receive a suspension. Uh, so try and fill it in. If you really have custom products, then it's of course uh, more than fine to uh, have this as a custom product. And then you don't need to enter in the brand, the, the global trade identification number or the manufacturer's product number, so MPN. Um, don't, if, if it's your first time, do not upload too much. Uh, what I mean with is if you have 10,000 products, maybe just upload 100 just as a test, let it run through the test feed, then once all the problems are fixed, uh, upload it to your live feed. Um, because the first time you enter uh, products, then you will have receive a automatic and manual uh, validation. Uh, if this all passes, then you can start uploading a lot more. But if, for example, you start uploading 10,000 or 1,000 products uh, and then you got lots of problems with your feed, you only have seven days to fix these problems uh, with certain uh, high uh, high warning errors from Google. So that's why I suggest just upload 100 so that you can at least have uh, the time to fix the 100 products rather than 10,000 products. Um, key elements on the landing page. Obviously, this is very important and it's a basic uh, requirement for every single e-commerce website. You need to make sure that your price is highly visible, that you have the availability visible, the buy button, a privacy policy on your website, and this needs to be on the top of your website. So the privacy policy can of course be on the footer of your website, but all the other elements, the key elements of your landing page needs to be above the fold. So that's basically when you land on the page, it needs to be above the, the, the first part that you see basically without scrolling. Um, images policy. Now, some people might add, for example, a border around the image. Um, this is actually against the po uh, policy. So what you need to do is remove the borders, remove any wording that you have, uh, even to some extent labels. Um, if it's a label that doesn't really say much, if it's just like a, like a cool little feature, then, then it should be fine. Um, but if you have anything that identifies the product, the brand, or anything uh, with promotions and, or the website link, do not add it in the image. This will be a direct violation. Tax and shipping. Uh, ensure that you have those available. So if you're in the US, the tax is very important. Um, this needs to be entered either on the product level, so in the data feed, or in the uh, merchant account settings. Uh, this is also for the shipping. So if you enter the shipping on your account level, so for example, you set up five pounds, if then you add a shipping uh, uh, price on the uh, product itself in the data feed that will override your um, setting in Google Merchant. Um, this is fine, of course, because a lot of people say a uh, majority of products are five pounds, but uh, actually uh, the pricing for certain individual products are more or less expensive, and then you can change that. Uh, so ensure that those are done. So if you're in Europe or anywhere except uh, the US, Shipping needs to be done. If you're in the US, tax and shipping needs to be entered. Sale price handling. A lot of people get this a little bit wrong. 
So if you have a sale or a promotion and something used to be 100 pounds, but now this month I'm gonna sell it at 95 pounds, then you need to basically um, put it on as a sale price. Uh, and then add the start date and the end date in your data feed. Do not change the normal price. So you've got price, then sale price. Those are completely two different fields. Um, it's better to add the sale price when you have a promotion going on. Um, of course, this does not mean if you have a promotion and you're adding a product uh, as an extra, as a freebie, uh, do not add that as a sale price because it's not really a sale, it's just a promotion. Um, and then finally, it's the merchant account settings. So there are two little issues that can occur. It's the store name. The store name cannot be in capital. So I had a customer uh, a couple of weeks ago and he used CCTV Tech all in capitals. Now you can't do them. What you can do instead is use CCTV tag in small letters. So it's CCTV. And that was .co.uk. You can use a uh, website domain name. So .co.uk has a little bit of promotion going on there. Um, and even you can add www. So it's completely fine um, to do that. The second uh, issue is that you need to verify your domain name. So if you haven't done so with Webmaster Tools, then um, you, you will still need to, to click on a little verify button. But if you haven't done it with the Webmaster Tool, then you need to be able, uh, you need to upload the file to your website so it's a little HTML file uh, that you just upload and that's fine. So these are all the common issues. I'm sure there are a lot more issues that can happen um, but these are the most common ones and uh, I hope you've learned quite a lot today. Uh, if you have any comments or, or questions please leave a comment below. I'm happy to answer every single comment and uh, I hope you've learned a lot. Well thank you very much for watching and see you next time.